after. Yeah. It's yeah. for me, I, I feel uh, uh, it's so good. I mean, like it's harsh. I'm resting on my mom's uh, lap, I feel, when I come back to it. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Uh, but it's amazing. I was just thinking how this has been consistently going on since COVID and if, even after COVID, you know, when most online classes stopped, this is still carrying on. And honestly, thanks to you and the team. I think it's the team because I have been absent so, so many times. Yeah. I could do it only because of them. So it's definitely the team. Amazing. Okay, so let's start. I can st uh, do the Mangla Charan. I haven't done it since quite some time. So, sure. Allow me to do the sure. So, Magnana Timiranda Sia, Gnanan Jana Shalakaya, Chakshuru Militam Yuna, that's my Sri Guru Namaha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam, Sapitam Yena Bhutale. Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dada Kinsa Kudam Krikam One Day Shri Guru Shri Tapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Schirm Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sadhana Lalita Shri Vishaka Vitamsi Shri Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jarpate Vitesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastiti Tapt Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vishibhana Sutri Kamani Hare Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vishnu Pyo Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitya Ananda Sri Adveta Gadahara Sri Vasa Vipur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Mataji, done with Pranam. Please accept our humble obeisances from everybody who have joined the group and are about to join Mataji. Thank you very much. Making yourself available and giving the time and always being so keen. Thank you for um asking for the texts and the verses and sorry if we have not been able to provide you immediately. No, uh, no. Very so, but I hope to be uh, back on course now. Sure, uh, sure. Mataji, we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 2, Chapter 8. Chapter 8 is the questions by King Parikshit. And the text for today, Mataji, correct me if I'm wrong, but we are on 25 and 26 today. That's right, yes. So I hand over to you kindly. Let us know if you wanted us to read something or give you any other hey. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for honestly being so accommodating. And um, like I was I'm just in, I was just thinking that it's quite impressive how during COVID, so many things started online, so many classes. <clears throat> and then after COVID, everything stopped. But somehow this alert classes are still going on. It's actually <clears throat> very commendable, you know. Um, I think you have quite a committed crew team there and um, devotees who are, who are quite eager to hear. So um, thank you very much. So... Um, I'll read the verse for 25 and 26, and then maybe somebody can read the purport for 26. Is that okay? 
Yes, Mother did. Okay, I can read that. Okay. <clears throat> so, text 25. Atra pramanam iti bhavan parameshti yathatmabhu apare janu tishtanti purvesham purvajay kritam O oh, great sage, you are as good as Brahma, the original living being. Others follow custom only, as followed by the previous philosophical speculators. Text 26. Nameswa parayanti brahman anasanad ami bibato chuta piyusham tadvakya abdevinishritam All in it, Brahmanu. Because of my drinking the nectar of the message of the infallible personality of Godhead, which is flowing down from the ocean of your speeches, I do not feel any sort of exhaustion due to my fasting. Hare Krishna, would you like us to read the purport for 25 and 26? Uh, 26. Okay, not 25. Okay. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada who? The disciplinic succession of Brahma, Narada, Vyasa, and Sukhadev Goswami is particularly different from others. The disciplinic succession from other sages are simply a waste of time, being devoid of Achyutta Katha or the message of the infallible Lord. Thus, mental speculators can present their theories very nicely by reason and arguments, but such reasons and arguments are not infallible, but they are defeated by better mental speculators. Maharaj Parikshit was not interested in dry speculation of the flickering mind, but he was interested in the topics of the Lord, because factually he felt that by hearing such nectarian message from the mouth of Sukhdev Goswami, he was not feeling any exhaustion even though he was fasting because of his inanimate death. One can indulge in hearing the mental speculators by such hearing cannot endure for any length of time. One will be exhausted very soon from hearing such hackneyed ways of thinking and no one in the world can be satisfied simply by hearing such useless speculations. The message of the Lord, especially from a personality like Sukhdev Swami, Goswami, can never be tiring, even though one may be exhausted from other causes. In some editions of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the text of the last line of this verse reads, Anyatra Kupitad Trijat, which means the king might be overwhelmed by the thought of his in imminent death by snake bite. The snake is also twice born, and its anger is compared to the cursing of Brahmana boy, who was without good intelligence. Maharaj Parikshit was not at all afraid of death, but he was fully encouraged by the message of the Lord. One who is fully absorbed in the Ajitya Tattva can never be afraid of anything in this world. Hare Krishna. Over to you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> So um, it's quite ironical, actually, considering that um, Parikshit Maharaj had initially um, placed a de dead snake on uh, the Brahmana's, around the Brahmana's snake, because he went to his hermitage because he was very thirsty, Parikshit Maharaj. He had been... Um, either hunting or just surveying his kingdom. And um, he felt very, very thirsty. So he went to this hermitage expecting to be welcomed as, you know, he was the king. And instead he found a sage in deep in meditation. Um, and he thought the sage was ignoring him. So out of anger, he placed a dead snake around his neck. But immediately he did that, he regretted and so it's quite ironical that now in this verse, he's saying that because of the nectar of the message of the infallible personality of Godhead, which is flowing down from the ocean of your speeches, I do not feel any sort of exhaustion due to my fasting. 
So because he was fully absorbed in hearing the pastimes of the Lord and the devotees, he was actually not feeling any thirst or hunger for seven days. So that's um, an uh, interesting point. Um, so in both the purports were actually quite, Srila Prabhupada, uh, text um, 25 is also focusing a lot on just um, uh, talking about mental speculation and mental speculators and how it is just a complete useless waste of time. I think we can all attest to this. We've all, we've all met people, maybe in our preaching endeavor or just somewhere who are just so much in their head with their own ideas of of what God is or what life is and where, you know, where we've come from, all these fundamental um, questions. And and it's so like hackneyed, exactly like Srila Prabhupada says, hackneyed, you know, just word jugglery. Actually, it doesn't even really make sense. It's just their own mental concoction, their own mental ideas, you know, as I say, as many people, as many paths. So a lot of the purport in text 25, Srila Prabhupada is just talking about this mental speculators and how it just, it doesn't lead you anywhere because it is completely on a mental platform. It's actually not even spiritual, you know. A lot of these mental speculators don't have any um, solid practice, any solid sadhana. And um, so... You know, and everything is just is just a concoction of their mind. So then, so then, what is the right process? The right process is parampara. Is the disciplic succession. Like for example, in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, actually in the Bhagavad Gita, in the introductory pages, you can see the whole disciplic succession. Starting from Krishna down to Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati, Thakur and Srila Prabhupada. You know? So this, this is our process. Our process is parampara. From Krishna to Brahma to Narada to Vyasadeva to Sukadev Goswami. All the way, as I say, to the present day. You know, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati, Thakur, Srila Prabhupada. And means this these personalities have not changed the knowledge. So that what it means that this knowledge we're getting from this disciplic succession is as good as good as getting knowledge directly from Krishna. Because the, each and every one in the guru in the disciplic succession has literally only acted like a postman. What does a postman do? He takes a letter and delivers it from one place to another. He doesn't open and change the letter or change the message. No, he does. that's not his job. His job is just to take this envelope from, from one place to another. And that is exactly what these um, spiritual masters in the line of disciplic succession have done. They've just take the knowledge and present it as it is without their own personal interpretations without any mental speculation. So this, this is our process. And this makes it very, very authentic, you know, and the mercy is, the, the mercy flows. Krishna empowers all these spiritual masters because they're not changing anything because there's no personal motive here so hence the end the the mercy just flows so like one time Shla Prabhupada, he was actually trying to emphasize how important it is to read his books and he said when he sits down to write the books he's not the one who's writing the books krishna speaks Krishna dictates and uh, Srila Prabhupada writes down, you know. So, be why? Because, because Srila Prabhupada was, he had no personal motive. There was no mental speculation, you know. He was completely surrendered. So, yes, Krishna will come to a surrendered devotee, you know. And 
So this is the importance of Srila Prabhupada's books. This is the importance of the disciplic succession. <clears throat> so then Srila Prabhupada, our, our process is the dis and disciplic succession, one guru to another. So then how to hear from a guru? And there's a famous verse, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text 34. Tad vidhi prani patena pari prashnena sevaya upadekshanti te gnanam gnaninas tattva darshana. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. So two very important components to this verse is one is inquire from them submissively. It's like, um, how did first time when Sanatan Goswami and uh, Rupa Goswami went to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how did they approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? If anybody remembers, they approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with straw in their mind, in between their teeth, with straw that signify or symbolizing that kind of insignificance, that kind of humility, and that kind of submission, you know. So we don't approach a spiritual master like he's our friend. Oh yo, bro, what's up? No, no, no. This is not how we approach. We approach a spiritual master with utmost, utmost humility, utmost respect. And then the second very important component is is to serve him. And and the more men menial the servant service, the better, you know. Because again, it's this position, you know, he's a spiritual master, you're the disciple, you're the servant. And when the spiritual master sees your sincerity, your eagerness to serve, and your inquiry is meaningful, then he he opens his heart to you also. And he shows you the way, you know. So it's a very reciprocal relationship. According, just like Krishna reciprocates with us according to our sincerity, so is the same with the spiritual master. Um, <clears throat> so why is it so important to hear? Why is there all across Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, especially this initial chapters and the verses, the purpose is so much emphasis on hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Why? Because our process is to fall in love with Krishna. Now, if you go and tell your friend that, oh my God, I just, you know, I'm just so much in love with this person. You know, I'm just completely in love with this person. And your friend is like, oh, wow, great. Um, what's his name? Okay, so and so what does he do? Um, I don't really know what he does. Okay. What's he like? I have no idea what he's like. Okay, but 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 I love him. Okay, so what what are his likes and dislikes? Oh, I have no idea. You know? So what do you love about him? Oh, I really have no idea what I love about him. So this is why it is so important to hear Srimad Bhagavatam because it is in the pages of the Bhagavatam that we actually meet Krishna. We understand his nature, we understand his form, we understand his pastimes, we understand his dealings with his devotees, we understand how much love he has for his devotees. We understand how Krishna will protect his devotees. There's such a such a sweet pastime in relation to this. So in the spiritual world, when there was this flower, I don't know, I can't remember the name, maybe Malati or something. It was a white flower, but 
in comparison to the other flowers of the same species, this flower was quite small. So this flower is thinking, oh, I'm so small, I'm so tiny, I'm not offerable to Krishna, I'm not good enough for Krishna. So the flower decided that just as Krishna will be walking the path, the flower will drop and, um, and the flower will be crushed under Krishna's lotus feet. So basically, the flower decided to commit suicide like that because the flower just didn't feel good enough to be offered to Krishna. So the flower is just waiting. Krishna came, is walking, you know, and just at the right time, the flower drops. And so Krishna, so Krishna, what Krishna does, Krishna bends down, picks up the flower and puts it on his head. So how sweet, you know. So, the, so the bazillion pastimes like this in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, you know, uh, Chait um, Chaitanya Charitamrita, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu deals with all the his uh, devotees and his associates, so many sweet pastimes. And this is how we at least begin to get a glimpse of Krishna's sweetness, of Krishna's love. We'll never fully be able to understand. We'll never, but, you know, even that, just that glimpse of, wow, this is the personality. And when you start hearing about him regularly, and, and how can you not then want to fall in love with this personality? That is so important. It is so important to hear Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. Nityam Bhagavatam Sevayu. <clears throat> also, when we hear, we develop faith and confidence that Krishna will protect. If I surrender, Krishna will always protect me. And there are innumerable examples of how Krishna protects his devotees. You know, the one of the most common outstanding example is Prahlad Maharaj, how he just continuously protected the Pandavas, in my last class was the example of Draupadi when she was being disrobed, you know, how he protected the demigods against the, um, the demons, you know, how he incarnated as Mohini Murti, and so many, so many other pastimes, how Krishna and Vrindavan protected all his coward boyfriends, you know, Agasura, Bakasura, and how they're amazingly sweet interactions between the coward boys, the gopis. So it's, we, it's so nice. It's so entertaining. You know, it, it kind of like fills, fills up our cup on all levels, emotional, physical, mental, we're always looking for connection. Today, the biggest thing is loneliness. The biggest thing, the biggest mental health issue, one of the biggest mental health issues today is loneliness, despite the fact that we're so connected. You know, we could have, I don't know how many thousand friends on Facebook and so many followers, and the people are really struggling with loneliness. Um, and it's a fact, you know, we're so disconnected from each other because it's, it's the social media and technology and it's the laptop or the phone or this or that, you know, we actually, we've, we have forgotten how to connect with human beings. But by taking shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam, it really actually takes, takes, it can take that loneliness away, you can completely depend on Krishna, as I said, you will you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, you will find Krishna in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam, and you'll be old and you'll be entertained and it'll be funny and is so amazing. <clears throat> also, it helps us become detached from material things. The more we read these pastimes, the more we'll understand that actually. We don't lose anything by becoming detached from material things and matter and 
material assets and material relationships and material ambitions. And all this takes time. It's a process. You know, it's not, it, it could take one lifetime. It could take more. But um, it, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita takes, this helps us not even becoming detached from material things, but becoming attached to Krishna. So it's simultaneous. The more we become attached to Krishna, the more we will become detached from matter. <clears throat> so as Srila Prabhupada always used to say, higher taste, you know. It is about taking shelter of something higher than just matter. It is taking, It is about taking shelter of something higher than just getting our security from material things. It is taking sh shelter of something higher than just getting our high from material intoxicants. So earlier in the canto, there is a verse that said that Sukadev Goswami says, for those who are wandering the material world, suffering so many miseries, so many miseries, you know, the mind, other human beings, other entities, natural catastrophes, you know, birth, death, old age, disease, you know, our own mind, how much suffering does our own mind bring us, you know? So for those who are wandering the material world, suffering so many miseries, the best thing is devotional service to save us. Lord Brahma, how many times did Lord Brahma study the Vedas? Does anybody know? So Lord Brahma studied the Vedas three times, all the Vedas, and his conclusion was, the conclusion that um, Lord Brahma comes to is that attachment for Krishna is the highest perfection. So there's nothing beyond becoming attached to Krishna. There's nothing more superior than becoming attached to Krishna. There's nothing else in this life that is going to satisfy us more than, than becoming attached to Krishna. Like we know in the earlier, you know, in the first canto, um, Nar Vyasadev had compiled, he broke down the Vedas into the four Rig, Sama, Yajur Vedas. He did so much work, so much compilation. And then he allotted all these, you know, different divisions to his different disciples so they could expound on them. And it was a lot of work. It wasn't like, um, you know, something... It, take a, it took a long time. It wasn't like something he just did in two days or two weeks. And Narad Muni told him, yes, you've done a lot of work, but you're not feeling satisfied because you've not written and emphasized about the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And that is why you're not feeling satisfied in your heart, which is the only means of deliverance, you know, which is the only thing that can satisfy living entities. And then he said, by presenting dharma, artha, kama, moksha, you know, religiosity, duty, um, fulfilling material desires, and then, and then liberation. By presenting this as a, as a way of religion and way of life, you're actually misleading people towards sense gratification and hence for the entanglement in this material realm. So... So then the question is then how to get this attraction to hearing? How do we get attracted to hearing? The ears want to hear, the ears want to hear, but even after a number of years of chanting and reading, we're still drawn to so much mundane hearing, you know? We're so drawn to gossip. Oh my God, gossip is so much more, sometimes so much more interesting than sitting with Srimad Bhagavatam or as social media, YouTube reels, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. It's so, so much more draw, drawing than Srimad Bhagavatam is because we're conditioned, because we're in this jaundiced state. You know, when you have jaundice, everything looks yellow. 
And when you have jaundice, if you, even if you have sugar cane, it tastes bitter. So this is our situation. This is our condition because we're so conditioned in this material world. That's why we have so much more taste still for mundane hearing than spiritual hearing. So how to develop attraction for hearing is one by serving and inquiring from someone who already has this deep attachment to hearing and chanting. Somebody who has this genuine, deep, deep, deep attachment so there's a very nice um, pastime in this regard. Um, and I think I heard this, it was a number of years ago, but I heard this directly from Bibi Govinda Maharaj. So Bibi Govinda Maharaj in some, I think maybe about 25 years ago, he spent a lot of time in Vrindavan. Anyway, uh, it was a Kadashi and he went, to see, I think, an elderly godbrother of Srila Prabhupada. I cannot remember his name. And they were in just a very small room and lots of, you know, senior godbrothers and um, devotees were there and they were going to chant all night, as they do, a lot of the devotees do especially in India on Ekadashi night, they sit and they chant all night. And I think Bibi Govinda Maharaj was invited to join them. And Bibi Govinda Maharaj was thinking, how on earth am I going to stay awake the whole night? It's a little room, you know, it's so hot. And I, I he's thinking, I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Anyhow, it was like, fine, yeah. And because he was around devotees who had so much taste for hearing and chant chanting, he stayed up all night chanting with them, you know. So we have to associate. I always say we have to seek association higher than our, higher than where we are. It, when we see devotees senior devotees who have this taste, you know, who, are, who get up regardless of what I always tell people, um, you know, Umapati Prabhu will crawl to Mangal Arti if he has to. You know, he will, cr even if he's ill, even this, even that, he's always there. I always tell people this, Umapati Prabhu will crawl to Mangal Arti if he has to. So when you associate with people who have that taste, who have more taste than you do, it just becomes so much easier. You know, that, another way to attra develop attraction is by is by doing it. Is by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord always and everywhere. Make this make this a priority in your life, and it doesn't mean that you do not do your material duties. Whilst doing your material duties. Just talk to Krishna, whoever you meet, however you meet. It requires a little bit of skill and a little bit of, you know, being smart about it, obviously. obviously but it is doable. It, is, it really is slowly, slowly, gradually, gradually, you know. <clears throat> so, like I said, so much emphasis, especially these earlier chapters, so much emphasis on hearing and chanting. And so what is the purpose of this hearing and chanting? He said, yes, one, we know ultimately we want to love God. And how can we love somebody we don't know? Also, another purpose to, of hearing and chanting is to please the Lord. Because the Lord is in our heart. And if we can please Krishna, then we will be so happy and we will be so satisfied. Like I say, Krishna... Says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharman Paritya, Maam Ekam Sharanam Raja. You know, if we surrender to Him, if we surrender to Him, He will He will protect us from all sinful reactions. If we remember Krishna, what does surrender mean? It means we remember, we give up everything else and every other sort form of religion, every other 
form of any sort of mental exercise that gives us some relief, that is some kind of like shelter for us. And if we can just depend on Krishna, Krishna will protect us. He's saying that in that verse, he's protect, he'll protect us from all difficulties. He will make this path easier for us because he wants us back way more than we actually want to go back to him. His desire to have us back is so much more than our desire to actually go back. So if a, many don't desire, many don't desire to go back sincerely. So if there's somebody who is sincerely desiring to go back, Krishna will make it easier. Krishna will help that, that soul. So he will protect us from all difficulties. And when we remember Krishna, then all our karma will be finished. Why? Because remembering Krishna or thinking about Krishna or chanting about Krishna or hearing his glories or sharing his glories is the same as associating with Krishna. There is no difference between Krishna and his name. There is no difference between Krishna and his pastimes. So when we are associating with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is completely above the modes of material nature, immediately, immediately, all our karma will be finished because we will be uplifted also beyond the modes. And by remembering Krishna, we become fearless. Abhai, you know, we become fearless. As it says, Surrender unto me and I'll take away all your sinful reactions. Why do we why would do we have so much fear? Because of material attachment, because of all our sinful actions and karmic um, reactions. So he says, I'll take all that away from you. Even by unconsciously chanting the Lord's name, we will be freed from death. Why? Because the agents of Yamaduta. Uh, of Yamaraj, the Yamadutas, they fear the names of the Lord. And the example is Ajamil. You know, unconsciously, he chanted Narayan. He was calling his little son. He wasn't calling Krishna. He wasn't calling Narayan. But because he uttered the name Narayan at the time of death, the Yamadutas, they initially tried to take him, but they couldn't. The Vishnu Dutas came and said, you cannot regardless of how sinful his um, whole life had been, at the time of death, he called out Narayan. And so he he belongs to us. You know? So this is the glory. This is the power. This It's unfathomable. It's unfathomable. We have, how glorious it is, this hearing and chanting. It's very, very, very difficult to understand. And what to speak if we did it with love? Ajamal did it out of complete ignor like ignorance in the same that he's not, he had no intention of. And yet, you know, he eventually got liberation. He made it to the spiritual world. Um, you know, Putna, he she fed, um, tried to feed Krishna her milk because she wanted to kill, but because she gave him his milk. Krishna gave him a position of a mother in the spiritual world. So imagine if we did it willingly, if we did it with some enthusiasm, if we did devotional service with some determination, if we did it with some a little bit of love, a little bit of eagerness, how much Krishna would do for us? How much easier it would make this process? So... <clears throat> In the Srimad Bhagavatam, um, we are aware that in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we've been given nine processes of devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnasmaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, and finally Atmanivedanam. So hearing, chanting, hearing and then the chanting and the hearing and chanting leads to remembering 
you know, serving the Lord's lotus feet, deity worship, praying, executing orders, i.e. becoming a servant, serving as a friend, and then complete surrender. So there's nine processes of devotional service. We've had them, heard them before. Now, in this verse, um, in the second canto, chapter 4, text 15, Sukadev Goswami adds one more. And the verse is, Yat kirtanam, yat smaranam, yad ikshanam, yad vandanam, yad shravanam, yad arhanam, lokasya sadhya vidhunuti kalmasam, tasme subhadra shravase, Namo Namaha. So he adds one ikshanam. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto all the auspicious, unto the all auspicious Lord Shri Krishna, about whom glorification, remembrances, audience, prayers, hearing, and worship can at once cleanse the effects of all sins of the performer. Ikshanam, just by seeing the deity, audience. Okay, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. Okay, then just go and take darshan of the deities at the temple. Krishna is making it so easy for us, you know, just by seeing. Doesn't mean, okay, I'm not going to chant, I'm not going to read, I'm, not, I'm just going to go and take darshan and that's enough. No, we understand how limitless Krishna's mercy is. We understand how Krishna is so desperate to have us back, that he's making the process so easy, you know, that Krishna, in, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then makes it even easier, you know. So it should kind of like move something in our heart, melt our heart a little bit, and bring this enthusiasm and eagerness to hear and chant more and more. And then, nice example Narayani Mataji gives is that not just seeing the deity, but just seeing the Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, just touching, just one line, just reading one line. And she gives an example, she gives this pastime as an example, and this is a true story. So back in the days, um, a devotee distributed a book to somebody, uh, Bhagavad Gita. And that person went home and gave it to his roommate. The roommate um, just opened the Bhagavad Gita and he just read one line, for the soul there is neither birth nor death. And that was it. That friend was an alcoholic. So one time drank too much, overdosed, and he literally, he passed out. Yeah. On, he did actually leave his body and he remembered that he went to Yamaraj and Yamaraj said you are you have committed so many sinful activities you must be punished and then Yamaraj asked him what have you got to say for yourself and that person remembered what that line that he had read in the Bhagavad Gita and he just repeated what he remembered and he and he just said, for the soul, there's neither birth nor, nor death. And Yamaraj was a, bit, was a bit astounded and said, okay, you can go back. You know, so he came back and um, finished reading the Bhagavad Gita. He joined the temple and he became a brahmachari. You know, so one line, two words, one word. From him. This is the glories of, you know, Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, powerful, like I said, unfathomable. It is unfathomable. Srila Prabhupada said, we wake up in the morning and, I th and we think I have so many problems. No, we only have one problem. Our problem is that how do we accept Krishna? How do we make Krishna part of our life? How? You know, how? And so Srila Prabhupada one time, I think he was talking to maybe some scientists or some highly professional people in some field or something. And Srila Prabhupada asked, who is God? And they said, we don't know who God is. So Srila Prabhupada said, I know who God is. I am telling you Krishna is God. Why will you not accept? <laughs> so 
that way, you know, it is acceptance of how do we accept Krishna every day, every day we wake up and our problem is not this or this or that. Our problem is accepting Krishna. You know, and Srila Prabhupada says, so when we're chanting, we should chant like a little child crying for its mother with that kind of sincerity and that kind of uh, utter desperation and that intensity. You know? Please accept me. Please accept me. From this day forward, I'm yours and you're mine. So later on, the second canto it is described that how to perform devotional service is Sarvatra and Sarvada, everywhere and always, you know. And now it is very easy, no matter where you are, you have we have access to thousands upon thousands of lectures and kirtans online. You know, everything is just at the click of your finger. Everything, all the books are there, everything is there. Only qualification is this, the the to be sincerely eager to take advantage of that. Back in the days, you know, people did not have access to all these scriptures. We're talking about even in the Vedic times, before things were written down, they heard I, I, it was not that easy to access pure devotees. And even when Vyasadeva wrote everything down, it was still not very accessible. We're in an age where everything is so easily accessible, we take things for granted. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it later, it's just that. We don't understand how accessible the scriptures, how accessible things are to us today. So the only qualification is the eagerness to be sincere about it. Then how else to do devotional service? Very nice verses, very, very, very nice, powerful verses, Srimad Bhagavatam 934, Man Mana Bhakto, Madhya Namaskuru, Mam Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Now, how are you going to think of him? Is by chanting and hearing about him, then that will just, you read something and your mind will just be ruminating over it. Your mind will be thinking about this point and that point and this pastime and that pastime. And Krishna says when our mind is, our intelligence is ruminating about him, we are worshiping him with our intelligence. How wonderful is that? Anyway, so back to the verse, Manmana Bhavamad Bhakta. Engage your mind in always thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer your obeisances to me. And worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you'll come to me. You know? And it makes it even easier. 9, 926 or 27. Yat yat ashnasi, yat 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 tat kurushvamad arpanam. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that also in Afkunti as an offering to me. So our whole day, whatever we do, we can just mentally offer it to Krishna. I know some devotees, um, you know, when they get their paycheck or something at the end of the month, they actually just go and offer that check to, to the deities in their house. And... And at first, it seems a bit superficial, like, you know, but actually it's quite deep because that is just making Krishna so much part of your life. There used to be this little devotee boy, no matter what he got, whether it was a sweet, a lollipop or clothes, no matter what it was, he would always go and offer it to the deities. Now, something like lollipop or something, he would keep it in front of the Lala and then take it very quickly so that Lala, his Lala ji doesn't finish it all, you know. And it's so sweet, but actually it's very, very deep, you know. So these are just perfect examples. Whatever you do, whatever you do, it is offerable to Krishna, no matter how good, how bad, how this, how that. Just offer it to Krishna. I'm go Krishna, I'm going to work. You know, let my work today be an offering to you. Krishna, I'm cooking. 
it's not just the physical act of making a plate and offering to Krishna. Yes, that's great, great. But even before you start cooking, dear Krishna, you know, a little prayer. I'm cooking this. Please, please let it be to please you. Let it be the way you're going to like it. You know, oh, Krishna, what do you want to eat today? You know? So it's so practical. It is like I said, step by step, but it's so possible. And then <clears throat> the question arises, okay, but, you know, I'm young. I have so many desires. I have my life to live. I have ambitions. I have duty. What do I do in that case? Very nice verse, Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd Canto, Chapter 3, Text 10. Very famous verse. Akama sarva kama va moksha kama udharati divrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param. A person who has broader intelligence, whatever he be full, whether he be full of material desires, without any material desires, or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the Supreme Whole, the personality of Godhead. And I'll just reread that. A person who has broader intelligence, whether he be full of material desire, without any material desire, or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the Supreme Whole, the Personality of Godhead. So, it is okay. You have certain material desires, you have certain material conditionings, it is fine. Just worship Krishna, because Krishna has the potency, has the power to heal you to uncondition you. So then at what stage, age, shall we worship the Lord? As babies in the womb, like Prahlad Maharaj and Parikshit Maharaj did, in childhood, like Dhruva Maharaj and Parikshit Maharaj. In young age, the perfect example is Maharaj Ambarish. In old age, Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra lived a very... um life a very envious life he was he had not been fair to the pandavas he was very um partial you know these are my sons and these are the sons of pandavas and literally his whole life he was burning because he didn't be become a king he really wanted his children to become king so that's a life he led, but at the end of lifetime, Vidura convinced him, like, get out, get out. You're like a dog here, you know, uh, just waiting to be thrown some bones. Don't, don't end your life like this. Just leave, leave for the forest. And for some reason, he, he listened to Vidura and he left. And he achieved, I don't know whether he make it, made it back to Godhead, but for sure he achieved a very, very high position you know wherever whatever his next life was and then uh at the time of death ajamil this um like i said uh, even that unintentionally he did devotional service and still you know he came back and then he he performed devotional service and he perfected his life so this um Intense desire, this eagerness, this enthusiasm, this intense desire, this greed for to perform devotional service, to sh take shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam, to take shelter of the Holy Name, to go and distribute this message. How do we get this? It's, in Sanskrit, the word is lolium, greed. And again, the, the answer is by coming in association of someone who has this greed. Um, so constantly seeking higher association and constantly praying to Krishna for this exemplary association. And we're so fortunate. We, have, we always have Srila Prabhupada with us in his books, in his lectures. And um, just praying for Krishna to help us, you know, constantly praying, praying, praying. And so to conclude, there's a very another very nice verse, 2237. 
those who drink through oral reception, those who drink, those who drink through oral reception, fully filled with the nectarian message of Lord Krishna, the beloved of the devotees, purify the polluted aim of life known as material enjoyment, and thus go back to Godhead at the lotus feet of him, the personality of Godhead. So, yeah, you know, if we just develop a taste for hearing, we will make it back to Godhead. We will make it back to Godhead. So I will conclude here. Um, if there are any questions, any comments, any corrections, please, um, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Mataji, for such a nectarian session today, especially for me, since I've missed the association. So um, this yeah. hearing uh, uh, words from your uh, session today really, really uh, felt uh, uh, so purifying. So thank you, thank you so much for today's session. Are there any questions or comments from the group? Okay, there are no questions from the group, but uh, Mataji, I just wanted to say that, as you said, it is a gradual process. So gradually, as you take up more hearing and more uh, chanting, um, your uh, your ruchi for materialistic things will decrease and uh, your surrender will increase and you will see that uh, Krishna's hand in everything. And uh, I experienced that uh, uh, in the last uh, 15 days, I've gone through a whirlwind, but uh, uh, at each and every moment, uh, Krishna was there with us. So uh, maybe just to say that Krishna doesn't come to you, at least to us, at least to me with a Shankada Chakra and Padma, but um, I can see his mercy and... Uh, I think uh, taking the Sharan of Srimad Bhagavatam has really, really, really helped me go through this difficult time. Uh, in fact, I don't even feel it is difficult. I, I, I just feel it's this time. Uh, he has been there with me all the time. So I can now understand when Kunti Maharan said, give me difficulties because I know the bliss she, a, a, a drop I might have experienced of the total bliss she was experiencing. So thank you, thank you for this session. Amazing, amazingly deep realizations, um, Kirtika Mataji. That's just, yes, um, if we allow Krishna, he's, he can be there for us at every step. Yeah. I feel if we allow Krishna every day is a miracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, however, <laughs> The Kunti uh, Stuti, you know that verse. Um, yes. give us his difficulties again and again. I always skip that verse. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. But but, but you, I, I, for me as well, I would skip that verse as well. But now I see what she meant. So in difficult times, uh, he's there. You can feel him. So that's why she probably wanted difficulties all the time because she felt him. Uh, at wow. that time, she she felt him uh, all the time uh, in difficulties. So that's why she kept on asking. So um, amazing, yeah. amazing realization, deep. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that. Thank you very much, Mataji. Yeah. Okay, so we have exhausted our time, and there are no more questions or comments. So maybe we can call it a day till we meet next week with you. But the class continues as usual. So yes. let us chant the uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra to purify Mataji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vanchikal Patarudhyasya, Kupat Sindhu Bhai Vacha. Patanam Pabani Pyo Krishna Vedi Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Thank you very much Aishwarya Leela Mataji Ki Jai Thank you so much Thank you Hare Krishna